everybody. Hello children. Welcome to this online field trip. I'm Sam and today we're at a pineapple pack house in Kent which is in the southeast of England. We're here to learn all about pineapples, how they grow, how they're harvested and how they get all the way across the Atlantic Ocean from Costa Rica to here in the UK. That's 5,000 miles away, a long, long way indeed. We have two expert guides joining us today. We have Nick, who's our expert here in the pack house. Uh, the pack house here is uh, where they keep the pineapples nice and cool, uh, make sure they're nice and sweet and tasty before they reach our local stores ready for us to buy. Thanks for having us here, Nick. Thank you. <laughs> we also have another expert guide, Raul, who's all the way over in Miami. Now, he is an expert in growing pineapples. Hello, Raul. Hello. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> good morning. Well, it's good afternoon here. I must ask you, what time is it over there for you? You know, right now it is 8.30 in the morning. So we just finished having breakfast. Oh, fantastic. Well, I hope you had something nice. We really do appreciate you uh, being with us this morning, this afternoon for us. <laughs> What will you be showing us today, uh, live from Miami, Raoul? Today we would like to talk about why Costa Rica is such a special place to grow pineapples. We would like to show you how we grow and how we take care of the pineapples, how we harvest pineapples, and how we send them to market. Fantastic, that sounds great. So all of the bit that takes place in Costa Rica and then sending it all the way over here. When the pineapples arrive over here, Nick is our man. So Nick, what are you going to be showing us today in the yeah. pack house? Today I'm going to be talking about what happens to the pineapples once they arrive here in the UK, um, some of the quality checks that we do, and also why pineapples are great for you to eat. Fantastic. I will also be learning a little bit about the history of us eating pineapples in the UK. It really is fascinating stuff. So we have a packed online field trip. Before we get stuck in though, let's meet uh, the people that we have taking part today. Let's go over to our schools and meet the children. First of all, of Mr Handley's class, who are in Woodlands Academy in Great Yarmouth. Hello, children. <laughs> Really great to have you taking part. Happy New Year as well. Let's go to All Saints School in Barry, where Miss Daunton's class is taking part. Hello, children. <laughs> Hello, Miss Daunton. And finally, let's go back to Woodlands Academy. We have another class taking part there today. Let's go to Mr. Brooks' class. Hello, everybody. Hello, children. <laughs> It's great to have you all watching and learning with us today. I know some of them, Nick, have already been learning about pineapple, so we will put them to the test. I think we great. might have some pineapple experts out there. We'll find out what you have learned a little bit later on. But first of all, let's start off by learning about pineapples. Now, we've already met Raul over in Miami. Now, Raul lives in Miami, he works in Miami, but he spends a lot of time in Costa Rica, which is where the pineapples grow, isn't it, Nick? So let's go over to Raul now and find out a little bit Bit more about pineapples and first of all Raoul could you tell us a bit more about the plant that a pineapple grows from? Okay uh, the pineapple is a tropical fruit and by that we mean that it grows in the tropics. The tropics is that region very near the equator. It has a climate that is very warm sometimes hot and it is very humid. It gets a lot of rainfall. The pineapple belongs to the family of plants known as bromeliads. Uh, that is a very large uh, family of, of, of plants. There's more than 3,000 uh, species. Some of the characteristics of the pineapple is that they have their leaves, they have these very parallel veins, and they have these small scales that help the plant absorb water. They all produce flowers, but the pineapple is really the one plant that produces a fruit. And the way it happens when the pineapple plant flowers, it produces many, many flowers. It produces like 300 flowers, two to 300 flowers that fuse together to form the fruit. 
fantastic. So the pineapple is, is, a, is a unique fruit. It's the, only, uh, it's the only fruit that uses all the flowers and fuses together in a kind of like into berries and then into the fruit then, Nick. And we have yeah, that's right. a bromeliad here, don't we? This is a relation to a pineapple. Yeah, it's from the same family of plants. Obviously, it's not a pineapple, but again, as you say, um, that family of plants, you'll get the flowers which turn into berries and fruitlets which make the fruit. Fantastic, that's great. Really, really interesting fruit then, a pineapple. Um, I'm wondering whether some of our children already knew this, Nick, because as I said, I think we have some budding pineapple experts out there. So time to put our children to the test. Let's go over to Woodlands Academy, where Mr Handley's class have some pineapple facts already for us. If you cut the top of a pineapple and plant it, another pineapple will grow. That's a really great fact. So, Nick, is this true? If you cut the top of a pineapple off then and plant it, another pineapple will grow? That's right. Yeah, the top of the pineapple or the crown, that will actually grow into another pineapple. Fantastic. Oh, endless pineapples then. Eat the pineapple, That's cut it, it off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing we can't, we can't grow them in this country, though, can we? We haven't got the tropical weather like Raoul no, said. No, not quite the right climate for that, but <laughs> yeah, right conditions, it will grow. Fantastic fact. Let's get another fact from Woodlands Academy. The flowers on a pineapple plant are normally red or purple in colour. What a great fact. So the flowers on a pineapple plant are normally red and purple. Red or yep, purple. Yeah, that's correct. Yep, good fact. Really good fact. Right, let's get another one of these <laughs> great facts. In most other countries, pineapples are called anans. That's a really good fact. And a little bit of a language lesson here. So in uh, most other countries, pineapples are called ananas. Yeah, yeah, I think virtually all other countries, um, that's the name they're called by. Great, lovely. Uh, one more fact, should we get? These are good, aren't they? Very yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> the first pineapple to arrive in Europe was brought back on a view age by Christopher Columbus. <laughs> that's a really great fact. So the first pineapple to arrive in Europe was brought to here by Christopher Columbus. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's so. It would have been about 500 years ago. Wow, yeah. a long, long time ago. Wow. OK, well, time for our first video. Let's learn more about pineapples. And this is all about how pineapples grow on that farm in Costa Rica. Pineapples from farm to fork. At this farm in Costa Rica, pineapples are planted all year round. The farmer's first job is to prepare the soil. The pineapples don't like too much water, so raised beds are made, meaning that any extra rain can flow away and won't damage the plant. Next, the best seed plants from last year's crop are loaded onto trucks and scattered along the raised beds. Each one will have two rows of pineapples planted in it. Each pineapple is planted by hand, with equal space between them. It's important for the plants to develop at the same rate, so they all get the same amount of nutrients and sunlight, enabling them to grow to be roughly the same size. On this farm, around 75 million pineapples are grown every year. It takes eight months of growing before the plants are ready for the next stage. The farmer drives his tractor through the fields, and using a special machine called a crop sprayer, sprays each plant with a substance called ethophon. Ethophon lets the plant know it's time to start developing the fruit. This process is called induction. The pineapple fruit will now begin to form, and five weeks after induction, it looks like this. Over the next 15 weeks, it will develop into a fully grown pineapple. It takes an amazing 12 months from when the pineapple is planted to when it is ready to be harvested. At this farm in Costa Rica, most of the pineapples are picked by hand because using machines could bruise or damage the fruit. Each fruit is picked and placed on a conveyor belt and then placed in a large bin. From the field, the pineapples are taken by truck to a nearby packing station. A sample of the fruit is inspected to make sure the pineapples are as tasty as they should be. They can tell how sweet the fruit is by looking at a sample of the juice through an apparatus called a refractometer. Hmm. 
Next, they are taken to the washing area. The bins are then dipped into water to wash the fruit, removing any dust that might be on the surface. The fruit in the tank floats to the top, where it is pushed by water pressure towards a conveyor belt. Next, any pineapples which are not of the right size or quality are removed. They are taken away to be turned into juice or other pineapple products. The pineapples that are the perfect size and shape are packed into boxes according to size. They are then ready for their long journey to the UK. The ship travels from Limon in Costa Rica to Portsmouth in the UK. Once the ship arrives into port, the crates of pineapples are unloaded. Then they are moved to a cold storage area where they are ready to be quality checked before being sent to your local store. Welcome back. Now in that video we saw how pineapples grow. I think we should go over to our pineapple growing expert though in Miami. Uh, Raoul, I didn't realise that pineapples don't grow from a seed. Well, we actually pineapples do produce seeds. They're very small. When you cut up on pineapple and if you look very carefully, you will find these little tiny seeds. They're like a miniature apple seed. Today I cut this pineapple and I hope you can see, I found one seed. That seed is rather, it takes very long to germinate and produce a plant. So we learned early on that the crown is probably the best planting material. But since we send all of our pineapples with crowns, we don't have enough crowns to plant new plantations. So what we do after we harvest, a field, we allow those mother plants to stay in the field and produce these shoots that we call suckers. Those are the ones that you saw in the video. We harvest those and we use that material to start a new plantation. Fantastic. And how long would it take for a seed plant to grow a pineapple? From planting to cre the, the, the emergence of the fruit, it's about nine months. And then once the fruit emerges, it takes about 20 weeks to be ready for harvest and it's ready to be sent to market. Great stuff. Well, we're learning so much about pineapples. I think it's time that we have uh, an opportunity for our children to ask some questions. So first of all, let's go over to Woodlands Academy um, to see if Mr. Handley's class have any questions for either Nick or Raoul. What makes pineapples yellow? That's a really great question. So what makes pineapples yellow? Uh, let's go to Raoul in Miami to see if uh, he has the answer to that question. Pineapples are yellow because they're very rich in carotene. Carotene is an antioxidant, which is also in carrots, and that's what makes carrots orange. Pineapples being very rich in carotene, are the internal part of the pineapple is yellow. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Raoul. Uh, let's get another question from Mr. Handley's class. Squash and pumpkins are from the same family. What fruits and are in the same family as pineapples? Oh, so squash and pumpkins are in the same family. So what other fruit is in the same family as pineapples? I think that's another one for Raoul. So Raoul, could you answer that for us? Well, actually, of the 3,000 or more species in the family of pineapples, bromeliads, Pineapple is the only fruit. There is no other. Other bromelias will produce nice flowers, but none of them turn flowers into fruit. So pineapple is a very, very special fruit indeed. Great questions. Let's go over to All Saints School now and see if Miss Dalton's class have any questions. Is the pineapple a national emblem for any country? That's a really great question. I think we should put this one to Nick. So Nick, okay. is the pineapple a national emblem to, for any country? Wow, that's a tricky question. Yeah, I think actually it's a national emblem for um, Antigua, 
Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. So lots of tropical countries. Yes, yeah, as you'd expect. <laughs> of course, yeah. as you'd expect. What a great question. Let's get another one from Miss Dalton's class. Why are pineapples called pineapples? That's a really good question. Uh, let's go over to uh, Raoul in Miami for this one. Why are pine pineapples called pineapples, Raoul? Well, the story goes that when Christopher Columbus came to America, he was the first European to see a pineapple, and he took back samples to the Queen of Spain. There was no name for the fruit, but since it resembled the cone of a pine tree and it was sweet, the name pine apple came together and it started being called pineapple. That is fascinating. That's such good knowledge. Thank you so much, Raoul, for that. And thank you so much, Nick. Now, as you can probably see, there's lots of activity going on behind us. We're in a new area. Um, Nick, I think we need to find out where we are, what's happening here. OK, so we're in our packing, storage and distribution centre in Kent. And I just want to talk you through the journey that the pineapple takes. Um, so the pineapples come from Costa Rica to the UK on ships. Mm -hmm. uh, the ship takes about two weeks to get to the UK. And even though it takes two weeks, the pineapples don't go off because they're in refrigerated containers. Now each one of those shipping containers, you can squeeze in as many as 15,000 pineapples. Wow, that's a lot, that's a lot, that's a lot of pineapples. pineapples yeah. um, and then the ship comes either to Portsmouth or Tilbury. And from there, they either go directly to the supermarkets, to Tesco's, or some of them come here as well. And when the pineapples arrive in the UK, we have to do some quality checks as well. So the sort of things that we're looking at, we'll be testing the sugars on a device called a refractometer. We'll be tasting the pineapples and we'll also be looking at the colour and condition of the pineapples. Fantastic. Well, I know that this all takes place in a very special room. So we, right. can we take a look? Yeah, yeah, let's have a look. Great, let's go. Wow, lots of pineapples in here. <laughs> yeah, let me just explain where we are. So this is our shelf life room. Mm -hmm. So every time we send some pineapples to the stores, we keep back a sample to monitor the shelf life um, and the freshness of the fruit to make sure that it's keeping okay. Great, okay, so that's and what that's these what pineapples these... are doing here. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yep. So how often would you test the pineapples? Um, so these ones here, every, every delivery that we send, we take, um, we take a sample. But as well, what I also wanted to show you is this is where we test the sugars. So we use this device, it's called a refractometer. And I think it was mentioned in the video earlier, but it was a slightly different looking one. There's two types of refractometer. There's one which looks a little bit like a telescope, which you look down. And this is a more modern one. So this one has a digital display and very simple to use. So I'll just show you how we use this. Great, yeah. yes, please. Okay, so we take a section out of the pineapple. Yeah. It has to be in the middle of the pineapple because the sugars will be different up and down the pineapple. Okay. This is the sweetest part here. So we take it from the middle. And that is that kind of the average of the sweetness yeah, of the pineapple? Yeah, yeah. you've got to take be? it from somewhere. Yes. So that's the most representative point to take it okay, from. Okay, lovely. Yeah, then we squeeze in some juice. Yeah. Press this button and it should give us a reading. And so what are we looking for here, uh, Nick, for in the reading? Okay, so we're looking for a certain level of sugar reading. Um, okay, so there, it says 11.5. 11.5, I've seen higher readings, but that's just about okay. Maybe if you'd like to just taste it, well, yeah. see what you think. 11.5 tastes I'm, like. I'm yeah. wondering whether you can trust the machine and whether, you know, good old human tasting is... <laughs> that is very sweet and juicy. That yep. is so nice. Very, very nice yep. indeed. That's good. lovely. Good. So you do that for every, like a, a pineapple in every batch just to make yeah. sure that yeah. it's so sweet. So in the shipping container, you'll have 21 pallets of pineapples. We have to test every pallet um, and we take sort of some samples from each one. Obviously we can't test every pineapple yep. because it, as you can see, it's destructive testing. So we take a few samples um, from every pallet and if the sugars are okay, then potentially it's a batch that we can use for supply to stores. Right. But this should just be double checking as well because as you saw in the video earlier, also at source, they're doing the same tests. They're checking the BRICS readings there. 
So it should be okay. Yeah. So it's very percent. unlikely you're going to have one that isn't sweet enough. Exactly. Great. Yeah, well, you do, exactly. do go to a lot of trouble to make yeah. sure we have nice, juicy, yeah. sweet pineapples. We do appreciate it, Nick. We really do. And yeah. Raul over in Miami as well. Okay, it's time to find out more about pineapples now and a little bit about the history too. Enjoy. What is a pineapple? Pineapples grow in tropical countries all over the world, including Costa Rica, Panama and the Philippines. They are a delicious and soft, sweet fruit. The skin of the pineapple is called a rind and is rough to touch, but inside the fruit it's soft and juicy. On the outside there are lots of small hexagonal shapes. These are called eyes, and each eye is a fruit. Although the pineapple looks like one big fruit, it is actually made up of lots of these little fruits. On the top there are thick spiky leaves which are called the crown. These help to protect the fruit from the hot tropical sun. Originally, pineapples came from South America, where they grew in the wild. It was the people who lived in these countries who first started to grow pineapples as a crop to eat. When European travellers first came to South America in the 1400s, they called the fruit a pineapple because they thought it looked like a pine cone. The famous explorer, Christopher Columbus, brought pineapples back to Spain. This sparked a craze for trying to grow them in Europe but pineapples like tropical climates where it's hot and wet. This means that in colder countries like the United Kingdom, it's really hard to grow them. But by the 1850s, it was possible to transport pineapples by ship across the ocean. From the hot countries they were grown in to us here in the UK. Over 150 years later, this is still how pineapples arrive in our country today. So next time you're eating a pineapple, think about how far it's come for you to enjoy. Interesting stuff. We're back now in the cold store where we started this online field trip. And as the name suggests, Nick, it is very cold in here, isn't it? Is it is cold. Oh. Yeah, it's about eight degrees in here. So, okay. yeah, pretty chilly. And is this to make sure that the pineapples stay nice and fresh? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, eight degrees is the optimal um, temperature for storing a pineapple. Okay, well, we'll be warming up very, very soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I need to ask you, actually, Nick, a little birdie tells me that um, years ago, hundreds of years ago, people used to hire pineapples to take to dinner parties. Yep, yeah, yeah, I've heard that too. Uh, pineapples used to be very precious and expensive, and so some people would actually hire pineapples <laughs> to, um, to use at their dinner parties to impress their guests and used as a status or, um, status symbol. <laughs> that yeah. seems so crazy. It really does seem crazy. Yeah. Imagine yeah. putting a pineapple in your pocket and going off to a friend's house for dinner, or you know, your mum popping a pineapple in her handbag and taking it round to her friends to show off. Um, I'm taking it that uh, pineapples aren't as valuable now. <laughs> no, 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 pineapple's a lot more affordable now. Um, so, yeah, I think with the advances in technology, obviously we can transport them here. They're a lot cheaper. Um, very, very rarely. They're not really grown in the UK. As we discussed earlier, the climate's not right for growing them here. I think I have heard they've been grown in Cornwall. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as I say, you're fighting the elements there. So they, the estimated cost of production was £10,000. <gasps> OK, maybe, yeah, yeah £10,000, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's one. great that, uh, that Raul and um, everybody over in Costa Rica is, uh, is growing the pineapples for us. Commercially. We, we don't, yeah. yeah, we don't have the weather really, do we, for it? Um, we've learned so much, once again, in that video about pineapples. I think we should give the children an opportunity to ask some questions again, yeah, Nick. So let's go over to our schools. Let's go over to Mr. Brooks' class at Woodlands Academy to see if there are any questions for either Nick or Raul. What are the best conditions to grow pineapples in? That's a great question. I think that one will be for Raoul over in Miami. So Raoul, what are the best conditions to grow pineapples in? Well, as I said before, it's a tropical fruit and the best conditions are in the tropic because it's got to be humid, rainy and very, very warm. Uh, you have to have good soils. 
And that is why Costa Rica is so good and Panama is good and the yeah. Philippines because they have just the right tropical conditions for pineapples. Lovely, so humid, rain, warm, good soil conditions. That's tropical. it. Tropical. Yeah. Tropical, of course. Um, let's get another question from Mr. Brooks' class. Are there any different varieties of apples, pineapples? That's a really great question. Let's get Nick to answer that. So are there different varieties of pineapples, Nick? Yeah, yeah, that's a fantastic question. Uh, there are different varieties. Although, generally in the UK, um, what you'll find, the commercially grown variety, there's just one, it's called MD2. Um, we only have that one variety generally commercially because it's so good, you know, it grows really well, you get a really good consistent product. So that's the one that you'll see on the shelves. It's always nice and tasty. Exactly. What a great question. Let's get another question from Mr. Brooks' class. Why are pineapples so tough on the outside? That's a really, really good question. I think we should go over to Raul in Miami. I think this is a growing question. Raul, can you tell us why uh, pineapples are so tough on the outside? Well, I think that is Mother Nature's way of protecting that juicy and soft flesh. It creates a very hard uh, shell, if you will, to protect the inside from the elements in the tropics and from harvest to to consumption in the in the home so it is a protective uh skin if you will yeah that is great it's a very nice protective outer layer it makes sure that the pineapples inside stay nice and juicy and and, and, and bruised i guess okay one more question from mr brooks's class what great questions we're getting yep. <laughs> what is the average shelf life of a pineapple oh i think this is a perfect question for nick what is the average shelf life for a pineapple nick Okay, well you can store a pineapple for quite a long time, particularly if you keep it in the right temperature and conditions. Um, we reckon from the point at which we deliver it to the store, it'll have a shelf life of five days. Wow, so quite a long time to yeah. tuck into your pineapple, because yeah. you might not want to eat it all at once as well. Yeah, um, especially if you keep it at the right temperature, it'll last even longer. Okay, so what is the, what is the best temperature? Do, yeah. we, do we need to take it home and put it into our fridge, or do we just put it in our fruit bowl on the, the dining table? Yeah, ideally in the fridge, um, the perfect temperature is 8 degrees, which is very close to the temperature of a normal household fridge. So, yeah, really in the fridge, and then that way it will keep for a lot longer. Fantastic, lovely. Okay, well, we've learned so much about pineapples, what they are, how they grow, how they're harvested, how they get here. But I think the most important thing to find out, Nick, is how we eat them. Because, of course, we all enjoy eating pineapples in lots of different ways. And we do have some different pineapple products here, don't we, Nick? And children, you should have some different pineapples, different types of pineapple in your classroom. So have a little try now and pass them around while Nick is talking us through these. Yeah, sure. Well, you've got pineapple here in all its forms. Um, some slightly more wacky ones, but you've got here, so this is tin pineapple, which you'll be very familiar with. Um, it's prepared and preserved, so it'll keep in the cupboard for a long time. Uh, you've also got here other unusual ones. This is pineapple jam. You've got pineapple juice that you might have instead of orange juice. We've got here dried pineapple that you might find in muesli. And of course, the best way to eat pineapple, fresh pineapple. Fantastic. What I'd really like to know, actually, Nick, is it's all good and well sort of seeing these lovely chunks here of pineapple, but yep. how do you get that from this? Okay, yep, well, yeah, I can just show you how we prepare a pineapple. There's lots of different ways to prepare a pineapple, but I think this is probably the best. And the first thing goes without saying, obviously, because we're using a sharp knife and a chopping board, you'll need an adult just to help you. Okay, and this is how we do it. So you take the pineapple and you twist off the crown. You put the pineapple on its side on the chopping board. Then you cut it in half. Great, yeah, it's a very sharp knife. So uh, yeah. always have an adult with you if you're going to try doing this at home. Yeah. And then you put it on its side again and cut it into quarters. Like that. Okay, and this is the tricky bit. So very carefully, with a sharp knife, you basically need to remove the flesh of the pineapple from the shell. So you put it in there and just gently ease the knife. Oh, lovely. Through to there and cut it off at the end. And then what you also need to do 
is just remove this woody core because that's not very oh, nice yes. to eat. Oh yes, because if you do take a bite um, with that, it, it never goes away. You chew it and chew it and chew it. And yeah, it's, um, it is like chewing wood. <laughs> yeah, it won't hurt you, but it's not the nicest part of the pineapple. Okay. Um, and then once you've got it, this you can cut it into any size pieces. Um, but yeah, you can serve it in the in the shell if you like. Yeah, or you All might right. want to cut it into chunks and. Pop it on a cocktail stick with some cheese, which is one of my favorite ways of eating it at parties. I yeah. love a, a cheese and pineapple. Yeah. That looks absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious, thank you, Nick. And of course, yeah. pineapples are tasty, but they are very good for you too as well. Just a couple of these pineapple rings or the equivalent in pineapple chunks is one of your five fruit and vegetables a day. Um, pineapple is also a source of manganese, which is good for um, healthy bones and a source of vitamin C as well, which is good for healthy bones, teeth and skin. How much pineapple do you eat, Nick? Enough. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? Do you, would you say you eat it every day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good job I like pineapple. Yeah, yeah it is. And um, well, we've almost come to the end of this online field trip. I think we've just got enough time to find out um, what you've uh, learned today on, on this uh, field trip because we have learned so much. So let's go over to Mr. Handley's class, first of all, at uh, Woodlands Academy. What have we learned, children? We've learned a lot of stuff, Danny said. Uh, <laughs> A lot about pineapple, how they grow and things like that. Oh, so you've learned a lot about how pineapples grow. Fantastic. We have learned a lot about yeah. how pineapples grow, haven't we, Nick? Great stuff. Let's go over to All Saints School now and see what Miss Downton's class has learned today. We have learned that pineapples are made up of lots of different fruits. That's a really great fact. So they have learned that pineapples are made up of lots of different berries, lots of different fruits. Yep, yep. That's good, Making good pineapples like. very, very unique indeed. Um, and finally, let's find out what Mr Brooks's class has learned today. Uh, they too are in Woodlands Academy. We have learned that mother plants left to produce more plant via suckers because all of the pineapples harvest are sold. That's great. So they've learned that the mother plant produces suckers. Um, and then that produces another plant. Yeah, really interesting how pineapples grow like that. That yeah. is very, very interesting indeed. They have learned a lot about pineapples. Mm. We have some pineapple mm. experts now. Um, before we go, two last questions. One for you, Nick. Okay. What's the best thing about uh, working with pineapples here in the pack house? Um, I've worked with a lot of fruits, but I'd say, yeah, pineapples, they're just an incredible fruit and the flavour is fantastic. They are. I can't wait to tuck yeah. into to that pineapple we could open earlier. Um, let's go over to Miami and uh, ask Raul the same question. So, Raul, what's the best thing about growing pineapples? Well, the best thing for us is working outside. We love to work outside. And when we're in the field, we're out there. Uh, there's a lot of challenges in a plantation. We just love being outside and every day facing whether it's weather variables or some of the things that impact the, the cultivation, we, we enjoy that very much. So a very, very interesting job. Well, we appreciate all of your hard work over there, Raoul, and also Nick's over here to make sure that we get the juicy pineapples to our local stores. And um, children, we really hope you've enjoyed watching and learning with us today and find out all about pineapples. Don't forget, if you would like to visit a participating producer or farm, you need to sign yourself up on the website to, for a farm to fork school field trip. It uh, really is um, lots of fun and really hands on as well. And you'll, you'll have a great time, just like the children you can see on the screen right now. And please do join us for another online field trip. But for myself and from Nick and from Raoul all the way in Miami, um, he might want to get a bit of breakfast now, <laughs> mightn't he, Nick? <laughs> it's a goodbye. Thank you so much for taking part. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Handley's class. Bye. Goodbye, Miss Norton's class. Bye. And goodbye, Mr. Brooks' class. Bye. Goodbye, Woodlands Academy. Bye bye. Goodbye, and goodbye, Raoul. Bye bye, Sam. Bye, Nick. Bye.